live both ways. Beechcroft Road in Oxford. It's a busy little cut through, which makes life for the residents a little hazardous. They often find themselves in the road, given the state of the pavements. So one householder has taken matters into his own hands. I'm tied to you, you're tied to me. Welcome to Folk Traffic Calming. A fake speed camera, a washing line, and the Mega Bunny. When you're confronted by socks and, uh, well, a giant bunny, you might not understand why they're here, but you certainly slow down. Right, oh, we'll let them through. Carry on, please. This is a problem with having your living room in the street. You do get cars. Was our castle and our king. You, are you all residents here? Yeah. Yes. You all live along this yes. street? Yes. This feels like a real community. We've got it generations. It is very much it's thanks to Ted. Ted changed a lot. Too. Really? Mm -hmm. He's done so much for the street, you know, uh, making it an area where children can play and cycle and be free from the traffic. So if you could have all the streets back just for you, what would you do with it? <laughs> it would be quite good because you could play outside more and you wouldn't have to worry about how the car, uh, like, worry so much about the cars, like, running you over. When you're in a car, you're used to a very predictable environment. And when you do things like put a living room in the street, you're suddenly making things unpredictable, suddenly engaging people. I couldn't believe it, yeah. There's a lot of smiling and a lot of waving. Hardly anybody across. Most people seem to genuinely enjoy it. If you make a street that looks like nothing's going to happen, you can drive down it at whatever speed you like. People will. Absolutely. If it looks like anything could happen, then you'll be more cautious, naturally. The thing is, lunchtime lull. Do you know this is the most relaxing time I've had in weeks? Tied to you, you're tied to me. It's like we're on a high trapeze. And as we drift from side to side. Residents in part of Oxford hope that laying out pot plants and benches will encourage drivers using their street to slow down. It's one of the first places in the country to become what's called a DIY street. Fed up of speeding traffic, a group of residents in North Oxford are redesigning their road. They no longer want Beechcroft to be dominated by cars, so they're introducing some ideas of their own. Residents have come up with a plan for this to be the city's first DIY street. If Oxfordshire County Council agrees to the plan, this is what the road could look like in future. We felt that... Then the fire engine turned up, just to prove to get through the arrangement. There's no problem, it turned into a real festive time where the kids went wild. We used to live in quite a small town where on the streets you could normally play on, and then I moved to the city a couple of years ago, and having like the first thing you do meeting your neighbours, painting the street, very good way to meet people. So I know everyone now. I think it's unique, definitely. Well, we do get a little bit of flack by a woman who doesn't even live on the road, just complaining about what a cheat we have to uh, take over the road like this and who do we think we are, and she was just um, having a rant. We were keen to explore this as an innovative and alternative approach to heavy duty and traffic coming I was really quite concerned when I heard about uh, this carpet that would be put outside my house. But actually, the, the day after it happened, I looked outside my bedroom window and I couldn't really believe what I saw because instead of seeing a horrible, flat piece of grey road, I saw this really interesting carpet on the road and it seemed to sort of blend continuously with the houses and it looks really really nice and it's very uplifting and I'm really glad it's happened right outside my house. I... There were one, one or two technical aspects to whether things did or didn't comply and there was a bit of a spread of views between the traffic management team and the local police. The average speeds were around about the very high teens, the low 20s. Average speeds dropped comparable to the reductions that one would see with a more conventional traffic calming scheme. People thought, ooh, what is Ted thinking of here? And here we are. And what do you make of the 
I think it's fantastic. I think absolutely fantastic. And the effort that the residents have put in is just unbelievable. I mean, people complain to me, oh dear, and what's happening in Beechcroft Road? I said, look, the county council hasn't put in any money at all. This is the residents who have done this. A little bit of support from DIY Streets and Sustrans and from Esme Fairburn Trust and a little bit from the North Area Committee just to help the last few pounds. But I think it's absolutely fantastic. And just turning left, right. It's horrendous. It's a very busy junction, obviously the main arterial route of the Pay Street. People can now buy all their goods and services from out of town superstores or off the internet. There's no functional necessity to come into Poynton at all. We're here to revitalise the village centre. The status quo isn't really an option. You can see how bad it is now. We've got to do something. We looked at pedestrianisation, we looked at opening up side roads, and everything we looked at didn't actually do anything for Poynton. It just moved traffic faster. Our challenge is to find a way to accommodate that flow of traffic that doesn't cut this village in half. And to do that, the scheme is about creating slow, speed, continuous traffic movement. It's a huge trunk road. I honestly, passionately believe you cannot make a junction as busy as this into shared space. No, I think it's a nightmare idea, to be honest. I think two roundabouts at a massively busy junction, people aren't going to know what to do. It is a highly trafficked junction. That's clearly one of our concerns. We've been to see examples of this elsewhere. We've taken real data from Poynton, and micro simulation says it will work. These won't be roundabouts. They'll be roundels. They'll feel a little bit like roundabouts. What you'll feel here is a, is a place, It'll, like a square, a plus. It's essential that you tell drivers the right story from further back. And so we're locating gateways on each of the approaches. The driver will sense a sudden and complete change in scale. The highway ends and Poynton begins. Shared space is a term which simply describes a shift in thinking away from the regulated highway towards using the natural skills that humans are blessed with to negotiate movements and to allow the normal civilities of life to continue. The guiding light has got to be what is best for Poynton in the long term. It's always hugely exciting to see a scheme finally in place after so many years of difficulties and persuasion and struggle and testing. Somebody who lives here and goes through it every day, I have two emotions. Uh, one is that I'm glad that the bulk of the work is done. Uh, secondly, I'm, I'm delighted. There's so much more vitality about the village centre. I can remember when we first sketched on a bit of paper this double roundel here and it began to emerge as an idea, would this work? And at the time, so many people said that's impossible. Well, I was a little bit sceptical at first about it um, when I heard that there were going to be no pavements or edges between the pavements and the road. Um, but I, I think it's working really well now. I think I was a hardened, not really sure, not quite against it maybe even. So I'm happy to uh, eat humble pie uh, and I'm no longer sceptical. Uh, I think it's easier, it's safer and it's quicker. Yeah, it's quicker to cross the road because they wait more. Walking around before was, you know, you'd be stood at the traffic lights and there were so many sets of lights, you just seem to be stood waiting for ages, whereas now it's much better. 